Can you prove that God exists? That's the claim we hear all the time from theists, but it all falls apart the second you look at their empty statements. Because these people are not rational. They're not trying to find objective truth. They don't care. Because that's too much work, and it doesn't give them the brain chemistry that they're looking for. Because these people, they're just dumb. And here comes another one. This is actually an older video, but someone sent it my way, so I decided, well, let's just go for it. Bad ideas don't expire. They just smell like they do. So here, we have someone saying that they can prove God without having any arrows of any kind in their quiver. They just declare that they've got one in the bullseye if you don't look at it very close. Actually, they just shot the arrow and drew the bullseye in later, because these people are dishonest. This is a good example of what's wrong with every religious apologist out there, and as we know, they just don't care. But we do, so let's go take a look. <laughs> No, no you can't. If someone could prove God existed, surely they would have done it by now. They've had thousands and thousands of years, and no one has gotten remotely close so far. It's why the religious are still using the same arguments today that they were hundreds or thousands of years ago. Nothing has changed, and I find it highly unlikely that anything will change until these people adopt a rational framework for evaluating ideas about their gods. And yeah, good luck on that. Can we prove that God exists? Well, it kind of depends what we mean by proof. Stand by while she runs around with the goalposts. This is absurdly common, of course, because the religious can't agree on anything when it comes to their ideas about God. And that's kind of a problem when you think about it. Even within the same overarching religious traditions, they simply aren't talking about the same gods, no matter what religion you're talking about. And that goes for Christians and Muslims and Hindus, etc. Because if you sit down a dozen theists of any particular stripe in a room, you'll get a dozen answers on what they mean by God. This isn't millions of faithful working toward the same goal. It's millions of people trying to justify what they've made up in their own heads. And that doesn't sound very impressive, does it? True proof only exists in maths. I can 100% prove to you that 2 plus 2 is always going to equal 4. You can't even do that, because mathematical concepts only exist in our minds. There is no objective existence of 4 anywhere in the universe without an intelligent mind to interpret it that way. If all intelligent life in the universe went completely extinct, there would be no such thing as 4-ness. It's all made up. And the fact that this maps so well onto religion says something about religion, doesn't it? Without people to interpret things as God, that concept would simply cease to exist. There is no deity without believers in that deity. It's all obviously just made up. But even scientists need a certain amount of faith. In order to even do science, they have to believe that there's an order to the world, that things will react in a certain way because forces like gravity are at work. And that's bullshit. Science doesn't require faith. It only requires observation and the attempt to explain those observations rationally. This is a lie, told by the religious, because they are desperately looking for anything to validate their beliefs. Will you do it too, is not evidence that your side is right. 
we understand the effects of gravity. We may not be able to point to gravity as a thing or hold it in our hand, but the effects that gravity describes are obvious and objectively real. And nothing that has to do with your God is. That's the part where they run into problems, and that's why they don't want to talk about it. It's why they want to scream out, but you're just like we are, without ever addressing the huge gulf between the two positions. Because they don't care. It's all feelings and facts can go fuck themselves. And that's just dumb. Proof in science is similar to a law court. Lawyers speak of proof beyond reasonable doubt. They can't mathematically prove that someone did the crime, but they can build up a case using things like confession, eyewitnesses, and documentary evidence. That's not quite true. It's more the case that courts generally operate like scientific inquiry. They are looking for objective evidence that suggests that one conclusion is more apt to be true than another. It's only because you can't prove a particular course of action took place without having objective data and evidence. Yet, when it comes to religion, they have absolutely nothing. Zero, zip, nada, zilch. They have nothing that would support their contentions except feelings and blind faith. And you notice the two things that are completely absent from courtrooms and science, right? Feelings and blind faith. Go figure. And it's this type of proof that I think we can offer when it comes to God. So here are some of those arguments or proofs, if you will. Except those are two entirely different things. All the arguments in the world will not provide objective evidence that your imaginary friend exists. You have absolutely nothing. What you're talking about, and we'll get into that in a minute, I'm sure, but all you have are bald assertions presented with no actual data, no rational data, because you really wish it was true. And that's not impressive. You can't just walk into a courtroom and say, Your Honor, I have faith that this person is guilty of the crime that they're charged with. You'd get thrown out because your faith doesn't mean anything. You can't just send a paper to an esteemed scientific journal and claim that you know things based on feelings or philosophical arguments. You won't get published because that's just stupid. Nobody cares about your claim. They care what you can prove. And the religious, whether they like it or not, can't prove a damn thing. There is no rational methodology behind what they do at all. Why is it that they're so blinded to their own delusions? The argument from morality. The idea that we have an inbuilt sense of right and wrong. That we have an instinctive sense, for example, that rape is always wrong. Unless you read the Bible, of course. All the way back to Genesis 19, where two angels nearly get raped by the degenerates at Sodom, then Lot offers up his virgin daughters instead. You don't think that's rape? Lot was being a pimp at God's command. I'm sure absolutely none of that was consensual, right? So the Bible is just fine with rape. And we find passages in Genesis 34 or Numbers 31 where God tells Moses to let his people keep the virgin girls for themselves. Or Deuteronomy 20-21, through which talks about what to do with female and child captives and how, after a month of grief, they're yours to do with as you please. We can go on and on and on. Judges has a nice passage about the rape of a concubine. 2 Samuel 11 shows David raping Bathsheba. The Bible is full of this crap, whether the religious like it or not. Women were treated like property, and thus, any action where they didn't have the power to refuse, that is by definition rape. And she won't acknowledge that, will she? This points us to a law inside of us, which in turn points to a law giver, someone outside of ourselves who's put that law inside us. But that doesn't make it a god. It certainly doesn't make it your god. And this goes right back to the therefore god fallacy that we see so often from the religious. 
here's the thing that we don't understand. Therefore, God is responsible. Yeah, about that. Why your God? Why any God? Maybe you should just admit your ignorance, which seems to be par for the course for the religious, and just say, well, I don't know, and just keep looking for answers. Because they don't care. They just don't. That's why. And if this is the best that she can throw out there, she's not being impressive at all. Because this proves nothing but her own gullibility. But let's give her the benefit of the doubt and continue. It can only improve from here, right? Then the aesthetic argument, which is basically just a fancy word for the idea that art and beauty point to something outside of us. Which again, can't be shown to be your God. In fact, it can't be shown to exist at all. I don't know, therefore God, once again. And that's stupid. Why not? I don't know, therefore invisible, intangible, universe-creating pixies. It's the same damn thing. And this is why all of these arguments fall apart the second you take a rational glance at them. Because they don't actually establish anything worthwhile. It's an attempt to rationalize something that you already believe by making a declarative statement that has no validity whatsoever in reality. Because these people don't care. They really don't. A character in a book called Chasing Francis about a church pastor who loses his faith says this, The object of all great art is beauty, and it makes us nostalgic for God. Not me. Not anyone, really. That's just a claim yanked straight out of your ass because you really wish it was true. But that's not how reality actually works. You don't get to just assert things because that's what you wish was the case. You actually have to prove that your assertions are true, and the religious are downright terrible at that. They really are. It doesn't matter what you want. It doesn't matter what makes you feel good. It matters what you can prove, and you people can't prove a thing. And this thing is intended for children, which I guess is the level these people are on intellectually, yet my kids would have looked at this video back when they were an appropriate age, and they would have just burst out laughing. This is intended for the lowest of the low-hanging fruit, because these people just aren't that smart. Francis Collins, who's one of the world's leading scientists, used to be an atheist. And the thing that finally convinced him that God existed was looking at a beautiful frozen waterfall. And that doesn't say anything impressive about Francis Collins. Now, he might be a brilliant scientist, but he also walked into the woods and saw a waterfall frozen in three parts and suddenly figured unsupported and unsupportable Christianity was a good bet. Yeah, dude, you got problems. It's like finding a coin lying in the mud and deciding to worship the force because it's got a light side and a dark side. And that's stupid. Every bit as stupid as what Collins did. Then you've got the argument from desire. The feeling that there's more to life than this points to the fact that we don't belong here. No, it does absolutely nothing of the sort. I mean... You don't belong here on YouTube because you're just making yourself look stupid to thousands of people, and you really ought to be embarrassed making such a lame attempt. But your statement actually means nothing at all. It just doesn't. Being dissatisfied with your life doesn't mean you don't belong here. It means you need to get your ass to work so you can achieve more. But, like I said, these people start with a conclusion, reached for entirely emotional reasons, then they go back and cherry-pick the data so that they can come around to these preconceived conclusions being right all along. And that's an example of circular reasoning at its finest. The entire religious mindset is logically fallacious. There is something severely wrong with these idiots. C.S. Lewis said, If I find in myself a desire which no experience in this world can satisfy, the most probable explanation is that I was made for another world. 
C.S. Lewis was an idiot too. If you notice, the more you hear these people yammer on, the less credible any of it seems to be. Just because you're impassioned in your delusions doesn't mean you stop being delusional. So knock it off. Then we've got the argument from cosmology, another fancy word which comes from the Greek for world, cosmos, and study, logios. The fact that the existence of the universe points to the existence of a god who created it. Except it doesn't. That's just another case of therefore God, which cannot be demonstrated to be true or reasonable or, let's be honest, anything but a sign of a sick mind. Without already believing in a God, no one would come to that conclusion based on the data alone. And if you go take a look at the comments on this video, they got absolutely roasted. There are far more downvotes than upvotes, at least as I'm writing this. This is commonplace where the religious leave their comments open because nobody's falling for this crap anymore. It's why they have to aim their videos at ignorant children. Because nobody else is that dumb. When scientists began to talk about the Big Bang Theory in the early 1930s, atheists tried to get rid of that theory because it supported the Christian idea that the universe had a beginning. Which it doesn't actually support, but the religious just aren't smart enough to understand what they're talking about. It's funny how quickly the religious start to point fingers and insist that it means everything came from nothing when it means absolutely nothing of the sort. Because they're convinced that absolutely everyone is just like they are. Everyone, even when they demonstrably aren't. Because all of this is just an exercise in emotions, not intellect. The only ones who say everything came from nothing is the religious themselves, and that's done entirely on blind faith. But yeah, everything has got to be just like they are, so they can run it all through their religious filters and get absolutely everything wrong. And if the universe had a beginning, then something or someone must have kick-started that process. And you're just going to assume, with zero evidence whatsoever, that it was your imaginary friend. No proof, no evidence, nothing that can be quantified. It's just, oh my feels, and they're off to the races. And that makes no rational sense. None whatsoever. Because to be taken seriously, you actually have to back up your bald assertions with objective facts. Put up or shut up, and the religious are incapable of doing either. It doesn't matter what makes you happy. It only matters what is demonstrably true, and the religious simply aren't concerned. Because at the end of the day, they aren't just talking to children. They are children. They are people with absolutely no credible grasp on reality. And that's not something to be proud of, is it? Then you've got the argument from design. Even atheist scientists talk about the universe being finely tuned. If a tiny change was made in something like the gases in the air or how close the Earth is to the sun, then life would be impossible. Which only proves that you don't understand the concept. We are here because the universe we inhabit happen to have the proper conditions for us to be here. That doesn't mean that we were the planned end goal and that's yet another place that the religious have their heads so far up their asses that they can taste spaghetti. They have an expectation that we're special, that everything is all about us, and they're just wrong. That's just ego talking, not intellect, and the religious are about the most egotistical assholes to ever grace the planet. It all had to be made just for us. No, it didn't. You're being an idiot. If the conditions had been such that an entirely different form of life had come about on this planet, well, they'd probably be saying the same damn thing, just as a three-headed squid with 11 tentacles. And if the conditions were such that no life could exist at all, then there wouldn't be anyone here to pontificate about life being here, would there? <sighs> Jeez, these people are dumb. Is everything perfectly in balance because of chance, 
Or could it be that someone has put it all together, someone's finely tuned it? That's your assumption. Now, onto the evidence that your beliefs are right. Oh wait, that's not how it works with you people, is it? You just have to make the suggestion that you're right, and all of the gullible and mindless believers will just gulp it down because it makes them happy. No proof required. And that's why they're terrified to talk to us, the people who are going to point out all of the failures in their faith. Because who cares if you actually know what you're talking about when you're getting an endless drip of dopamine in your brain, right? Oh, right. We care. We have to care. And that's why we think you're idiots. And look at how complicated humans are. Could this maybe point to a God who designed us? You've got absolutely nothing to go on there. Sorry. You notice that this video is about proving God Yet she's come absolutely nowhere close to any proof whatsoever. It's all mere suggestions that maybe, maybe this could be the result of some divine interference. Okay, prove it. Go ahead. Do something but flap your lips. But that's really all they've got. They don't have to sell this to the skeptics who are just rolling in the aisles laughing our asses off. They only have to sell it to the gullible rubes who are already predisposed to believe in this bullshit and are willing to open their wallets and fork over their hard-earned cash. Never forget, that's ultimately what this is all about. Someone is getting rich. That's not how actual intellectual endeavors work. Isaac Newton said, in the absence of any other proof, the thumb alone would convince me of God's existence. But Newton was delusional when it came to his beliefs in God. You just have to look up his history to see that he had some things wrong upstairs when it came to his religious beliefs. Besides, most Christians today would completely reject him as being a true Christian because he didn't believe in the Trinity, he didn't accept the existence of the soul or demons or devils, and he didn't believe, according to some, that Jesus was actually God. He was just made of a similar substance. He also refused the religious sacraments before he died, and let's be honest, he had some issues to be certain, but it seems pretty clear that he was only making claims about religion because it was illegal not to, based on the decrees of King Charles II. There are an awful lot of Christians who don't really understand Newton. They just figure that because he was a well-known name, well, he was automatically one of them. Then you've got the argument for resurrection. This needs a whole other video, but if Jesus really rose from the dead, then this shows that he must have been God. And that's no better than the argument from Harry Potter's scar, which shows that if Harry Potter survived the attack from he who shall not be named, then he must have been the chosen one. Does that sound stupid? Yeah, it is, just like yours, because you can't actually prove that Jesus was resurrected or that Jesus ever existed at all. This is more of the stupid, I believe it, so it has to be true nonsense. And that's just a joke. The religious just don't understand the punchline. It's a joke on them. Because no matter how many times you say, if, you haven't actually shown anything. If doesn't become because, just because you wish it would be. But the religious... They just aren't that smart, are they? And finally, what I think is one of the most important arguments, one of the most important proofs, is the argument from personal experience. You mean the argument from personal incredulity. Your whole belief system is a fallacy. It doesn't matter how you interpret experiences. It only matters if the interpretation is factually correct. If someone looks up in the night sky and sees a light, that doesn't mean they've seen an alien spaceship. If they're in the woods and they hear a noise, that doesn't mean they've had a close encounter with Bigfoot. You actually have to prove it, and the religious are nowhere remotely close. 
But let's let her make a fool of herself some more before I continue. Ask any Christian how they know that God exists, and they will have their own unique story that they can share with you. Just like Muslims will, and Hindus will, and even Scientologists. Everyone has a story. None of them can show that their stories are reasonable or rational. And that's kind of a problem. It doesn't matter what conclusions you come to, you have to be able to prove it actually happened that way. Oh, well, I had this experience and I'm going to declare that this thing happened because that makes me happy. Well, fuck your happiness. You don't get to proclaim that you're right until you can show with evidence that your conclusion actually happened that way. And none of them can do that. It's just children telling fanciful stories because they like the feeling it gives them. And that doesn't mean anything. At the end of the day, it's up to you to decide if any of these proofs hold up in a court of law and whether you think they're worth putting your faith in. And that answer is no. Every single thing that's come out of your mouth has been laughably absurd. And for the people you're talking to, they don't care. They're only in it for the feels, too. You've got people with piss-poor thought processes gobbling down absurd ideas for emotional reasons hook, line, and sinker, and you think, therefore, that you've accomplished something. Well, yes, you have, but it's not what you like to think. You've just made yourself look stupid, except to the other stupid people just like you. And I'm not sure that's something that you ought to be proud of. I'd be embarrassed in your shoes. Then again, I'm not a moron. Not anymore. Not since I gave up the absurdity that is religion and started to care if the things in my head were actually defensible. Maybe you people ought to give that a shot. Just saying. Because there are fewer and fewer people in advanced societies today that pay any of this religious gobbledygook any mind anymore. Which is why you have to go after the ignorant and uneducated in third world countries. And children who just don't know any better. The ones that have been poisoned early on, before their brains were well enough formed to see through your bullshit, those are the people you're going after. And those people aren't going to keep believing for long. Your views are slowly dying, and you can't figure out why. Maybe this will have given you a few clues because, holy crap, you could use some. But I'm not going to hold my breath. These people have some serious mental problems upstairs, and that makes them happy. It's no wonder religion is such a pathetic waste of time, because the people are too. And that's sad. <laughs> Dick it, bum, 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 d